The M4 Mac Mini is probably the best deal in tech right now. For $500, you'd get a computer that's not only powerful, but also really tiny. But there's one big problem. The base variant gets you only 256 gigabytes of storage, which is really easy to fill up if you install a lot of apps or work with huge video files regularly. And that's where this comes in. This right here is the Mini Sapporo iExpandMate, a USB-C based hub for the M4 Mac Mini with external storage. This has an M.2 NVMe slot and you can upgrade the storage up to eight terabytes at a fraction of the cost. I've been using it for the past few weeks and in this video, I wanna share my experience with you guys. And let's find out if this is worth your money. Let's start with the unboxing. Inside the box, you get a user manual, the dock itself, a screwdriver, two standoffs and one extra screw for the SSD door. And last but not the least, you get thermal pads for the SSD. Doing a quick overview, towards the front, you've got a micro SD card slot, a full size SD card slot, and next to that, you've got three USB-A ports. These are all USB 2.0. Towards the back, you have a 3.5 mm audio jack, HDMI port, display port, and the host cable to connect to the Mac mini is permanently attached to the dock and cannot be removed. Installing a SSD in this hub is super simple. You open up the SSD door and you can see that it supports different sizes of M.2 SSDs. So 2230, 2242, 2260, and 2280. I'm gonna be using a default size M.2 SSD here from Crucial. This is the Crucial P3 Plus, a one terabyte PCI Gen 4 M.2 SSD. So first you're gonna place the standoff, slide it into the correct position, install the SSD, tighten the screw, and do not forget to put on the thermal pad because this helps in keeping the SSD cool and prevents it from overheating. And once you're done with this, you can put back the SSD cover and tighten the screw. And that's pretty much it. That's how you install the SSD inside this hub. Now talking about design and build quality, the Mini Sapporo hub looks exactly like the Mac Mini. It's got the same dimensions. The Mac Mini just sits on top and fits perfectly. Even the finish and color are a close match. And the dock is completely made out of aluminum, so the build quality is really sturdy. And the rubber feet on the bottom are really grippy. So while it's on your desk and you're plugging in and plugging out things, the dock does not move, which is a really good thing. And overall for the price, it looks and feels very premium. And if you've ever had a problem with the Mac Mini's power button placement, this also fixes that. Now getting to performance, I started my testing with the SD card slot. I'm using 128 gigabyte SanDisk Extreme Pro here. I ran the Blackmagic disk speed test and got really interesting results. Both my read and write speeds were above 150 megabytes per second. And these are decent speeds for the price. Moving on to the SSD performance, ran the Blackmagic disk speed test with a five gigabyte target file size. And my read speeds were about 800 megabytes per second. And I got write speeds of 950 megabytes per second. Again, very decent for a USB-C 10 gigabits per second dock. The USB 2.0 ports towards the front are only useful for things like keyboard and mouse receivers or webcams things that don't require high bandwidth because I tested these ports and they give me read and write speeds of 40 megabytes per second, which is really slow for any sort of data transfer. Also, this dock does not interfere with your Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. I was getting solid Wi-Fi speeds from my connection and both my keyboard and mouse are connected via Bluetooth and I had no issues while using them. This also does not interfere with the thermals or cooling performance of the Mac Mini since it leaves the exhaust open. The HDMI port on the back can support a 4K display up to 60 Hz and the display port can support a 4K display up to 144 Hz. My only complaint with the Mini Sapporo Hub is the cable on the back. It takes up two out of the three Thunderbolt ports available on the Mac Mini. I think this dock would have been fine by taking only one USB-C port on the back. So yeah, if they can change that in the future, that'd be nice. But apart from that, I've had no issues with the Mini Sapporo Hub. It's been going strong so far. I'll drop links in the description down below to the Mini Sapporo website if you guys are interested in buying this dock. It retails for $70 in the US and 7,000 rupees in the Indian market. I'll also leave my discount code so you guys can save some money at checkout. Also, if you guys enjoyed this video, do give it a big thumbs up, subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell so you guys don't miss out on future uploads. If you have any questions or queries about the dock, do let me know in the comment section down below. I'll be there replying to you guys. But with that being said, I'll talk to you guys in the next one.